now it's your talk about uh, how to make a Puppet optional. As we saw, Puppet is still um, still used for configuration management, but there are projects ongoing. Yeah, um, so I know this is a topic that's brought a lot of attention uh, in the past uh, several months. Uh, I'd like to go over it and um, talk through what we've done so far and what we're planning to do in the future. Um, first of all, this is Luna, my dog. Hopefully she'll be quiet and not bark at the door while I'm speaking. Um, I live in Tel Aviv, for those of you who don't know me, uh, with her and my wife. And usually I work at the Red Hat office in Ranana, um, but like most of us, I believe, uh, I'm working at home uh, for the past half year nearly. Um, but that's, uh, I guess, less interesting for most of the audience. More interesting is Puppet. Um, so first, a bit about the motivations. Um, we wanted to make Foreman uh, simple to install and to use. Many people have noticed Foreman is a huge beast that has a lot of options. I think someone in the chat called it a Swiss knife. That's a very good um, representation of uh, Foreman. Um, but uh, that means it's very complex to properly set up and use. Um, we want to be agnostic to config management solutions. Foreman started as uh, basically a nice UI for Puppet with a little bit of extra. Um, uh, Puppet has always played a very central role, has been tied in a lot into Foreman everywhere, whether it's in the UI, the installer, in the way we set things up. Um, and we want to be more neutral and allow users to use whichever solution that they prefer to use. Um, we wanted to replace some hard to maintain legacy workflows with some newer, more opinionated ones. Um, and that's also related to the next point, which is focusing on some tested and supported workflows. Um, we wanted to also unify the internal certificate handling. Uh, if those of you who have installed both Foreman and Catello know that the way we handle certificates is quite different between those two. And we wanted to address some feedback that we get, got from the community survey. Now, Greg showed you a lot of graphs, um, so I'm going to just show you one. Um, and like I said, we can break down the statistics from the survey um, for any combination of questions. So this graph is actually breaking down uh, the responses to who's using um, the various config management solutions broken down by the experience. So uh, the experienced graph is those users who have been using Foreman for two or more years, and the new is the users who've been using Foreman for less than two years. Now keep in mind that this is just the users who've replied that they use config management which is just a bit under 80%. Um, what that means is that of our new users, about a third are actually using Puppet nowadays. Um, and that's users who've started using Foreman in the past two years. That means that Puppet isn't quite a centric part in their workflows. Um, and as you've seen in the UI, Puppet is featured a lot in many places and it makes some of the Forms complicated, it makes some of the, a lot of installer options and so forth. Um, but we still do have a significant chunk of Puppet users. Um, so it's not like everyone's dropping Puppet and moving over to Ansible. Um, also, by the way, Salt has uh, seen some increase in the recent years. And Chef is stable at 4%, which is kind of expected considering that um, not quite as maintained as any of the others. Um, but since we still have a lot of Puppet users, uh, we don't want to throw them under the bus. Um, we decided on a couple of guiding principles for this uh, work. 
Um, the first of which is that users of Puppet will not see a deterioration, deterioration in their main workflows, and hopefully they will also see some improvements come out of this um, effort. Um, and the other guiding principle that we had was that users who don't use Puppet, which as we've seen previously is the majority of our new users, will have a simpler and easier to use experience with Foreman. There were a couple of additional assumptions that we made while planning the, the work. One is that the Puppet-based installer will not be rewritten. Uh, that's a huge project and uh, we don't have the capacity to do that at the moment and working quite well. So there's also not quite a need to do that. Um, and it doesn't actually require setting up a Puppet infrastructure for the most part. Only uses a standalone Puppet. And an additional assumption that we've made is that Puppet 5 and all the support can be dropped as it's going to be end of life in November. Um, we still have a lot of workarounds in Foreman and in the smart proxy for various things that were needed, for example, in Puppet 2 or Puppet 3. And a lot of that code can definitely be dropped and make our lives as developers and our users set up and supportability much better. So uh, now I'm going to go through our current progress. I'm going through it in the same order as the points I've outlaid in the post from several months ago that's titled uh, The Road to Making Puppet Optional. You can use this quick short link to get to that document. I'll also show the link in the end. Um, so let's go over the various different aspects that we are planning on changing as part of this large effort. First of all, facts and reports. The processing for facts and reports from Puppet is going to remain in form and core. Uh, we think that there is also potential to add more fact and report sources into core so that out of the box when you install a fresh form and you can pass facts and reports from various sources. We need to drop support for legacy uh, factor that we have still some support for facts that were present only in factor one or factor two. Um, those of you who don't know, factor is the engine that Puppet uses to get and uh, send the post facts to Foreman. There's lots of areas for improvement here. Um, there's been several discussions on how we can better use a better past facts and reports, how we can improve the storage, how we can improve the performance of this. Um, there's quite a lot of work around this. And the work around here has mostly not started yet. There's been some small changes already done, but there's still quite a lot of effort uh, that we can do and improve in this area. By the way, if anyone is interested, then please feel free to reach out to me if you want to take part in improving any of these points. There's definitely plenty of work to do and we can appreciate any help that we can get. Second, um, and this is probably the biggest change, um, is the external node classification. Um, so Puppet users are aware that Foreman serves as an external node classifier for the Puppet server. That means that when a host reports to the Puppet server, Foreman will tell the Puppet server which environment that host belongs to, which Puppet classes should be assigned to it, and what values the various class parameters get for that Puppet class. This workflow uh, is going to be extracted into a Puppet plugin called Foreman Puppet ENC um, and removed from core. The reason that we are doing this is that this is probably the majority of the UI clutter and um, setup options that are not needed if you don't use Puppet. The rest of it is usually quite small, but this uh, complicates quite a lot. If you remember the host form, there's, I think, around um, there's two tabs and three or so fields on that form that are just used only for Puppet, and you don't care about those if you don't actually use Puppet. So support will be removed from uh, Foreman Core in version 3.0. Uh, 
which version is going to be 3.0 is yet to be determined, but it will probably be in one or two versions from now. The plugin is still a work in progress, but the plan is to have it installable alongside core for a smooth migration path if you wish to keep using this functionality. Um, by the way, another outcome from the community survey was that this workflow and specifically class parameters are used less than fact and report processing. I don't have the data in front of me right now, but if uh, fact and report processing was used by about 70% of the users who are using config management, not just Puppet. Um, class parameters were only used by around 60%. Um, and the similar numbers are also for Puppet classes and environments. Um, so this is going to be quite a large change, um, and we want to make it as smooth as, as possible both for users who do not use Puppet in their infrastructure and for users who want to continue using Puppet in the way that they are used to. Um, so our hope is that nothing major breaks in this workflow. Uh, the next point is the Puppet module content management with Catello. We've seen very low adoption of this. Um, I believe the numbers were in the uh, 10 to 20 percent of users who actually use Catello that use Puppet modules. And I believe the reason for that is that there are better tools in the Puppet ecosystem, such as RDNK, that are used for managing Puppet modules, which are not quite compatible with the way that Catello works with lifecycle environments and so on. Additionally, Puppet modules uh, are not a supported type by Pub3 at this time, which would make it very difficult to support them if we um, once we migrate to part uh, 3 in Catello. So that means that support for Puppet modules in Catello will be dropped in um, Catello 4.0. Next point is the Puppet CA auto-signing for new host. Um, if you've provisioned a host in Foreman and you have Puppet CA set up, then you know that there's multiple ways that you can get the Puppet CA to auto-sign the new host you've just provisioned. A lot of these implementations uh, are available, but that means that getting it set up properly and supported is difficult, and some of these workflows are better than others. We are going to be focusing on just one supported implementation, which is going to be the token-based one, and it will use the Puppet API available in Puppet 6 and later. Work on this still hasn't started, so if you're interested in that, please feel free to reach out. Next option, uh, next point is Puppetron. Puppetron is uh, very complicated to set up properly, and it's not something that's actually supported out of the box in the recent Puppet versions. You need to use additional tools like Coria or MCO um, to run these uh, one-off Puppetrons. So the decision we made around this point is to remove the support for uh, Puppetron as it is right now, Foreman, and we will be recommending using the remote execution template that is already present for triggering one-off Puppetons. So there's already a remote execution template that you can use, whether you're using remote execution via SSH, via Ansible, or via SALT, and you can use that to trigger Puppetons on your host if needed as a one-off run. This was also, by the way, very lit uh, little used. There was, I think, around 20 to 30 percent of the community who used this option uh, in the recent community survey. Um, so the support has already been dropped, actually, in Foreman Core in the 90s. Um, once Foreman 2.2 is released in about a month or so, you'll see that the Puppet Run button on the host detail page is no longer there. The proxy providers are still present, but uh, they need cleanup from the smart proxy. Um, so there's still some effort around this point to do. Next point is the Puppet CA requirement for installation. As I mentioned, uh, we have a difference in the installer when we use Catello or when we don't use it. And that is because we need some certificates to be generated for our communication between the different parts of Foreman, whether it's between the 
um, proxy and foreman itself, or for the foreman UI. Um, and foreman doesn't have a certificate authority out of the box. Since it was uh, initially started as a tool for managing Puppet, um, it, the way that foreman currently sets up its uh, certificates, unless they are provided to the installer, is by using the Puppet CA for the internal foreman certificate. Um, Catello, on the other hand, has a different tool called Catello Cells, which generates certificates. Um, and the plan is to use a new tool for generating certificates. Um, that um, sorry, lost my train of thought. To use a new tool um, to unify this experience for both Foreman and Catello, generates the certificates in an easy manner and use the, have the installer integrate that, um, that workflow and make managing certificates much easier to do um, when you're setting up Foreman. There's a proof of concept right now, a tool that uh, Eric Helms created called Foreman PKI, um, that will hopefully be able to replace both Puppet CI and Catello certs for our internal certificates, but there's quite a lot of work needed to get that production ready and properly integrated into the installer. Uh, next point is the dashboard widgets. Um, there's multiple dashboard widgets for config reports. We don't really need to display these if there's no reports recorded in the systems. Um, and if you have more than one source of config reports, then right now you will have multiple different widgets, both for each source and an additional widget for uh, the overall status of the various uh, config reports. Um, this is something that also needs to change. Um, the, we don't need six different widgets on the dashboard if you're using, for example, Puppet and Ansible. We can unify that into uh, one widget. Um, and we would probably want some status widget that shows not only the config status of the different hosts, but also additional statuses that are provided by plugins, such as registration status, other statuses that are available on the host level. Um, work on this, again, has not yet started, but this is also a um, plan change. Um, moving on to the host detail page. Um, the host detail page definitely needs a redesign. Um, so a lot of you have noticed that it's quite um, useless, to be honest, as it is. There's two huge puppet run graphs in the middle of the page that are not very interesting, especially if you're not using puppet. Um, and there's a lot of information that's not available there. There's a new experimental page that's been just merged and will be available in Foreman 2.2. Um, it was also demoed on the last demo by Emil. So you can take a look at what it's looking like. Um, we started this as an experimental page so we can gather more feedback on what information is useful on this page, the different workflows that users are using it for. Um, so please take a look at that and give us your feedback because this is far from complete and there's still a lot of work around this. And we want to make this uh, uh, page that is very useful for our users, but also uh, hopefully finally unify the host detail and the content host detail page um, from Catello into one page that includes all of the information about the specific host. That is also going to be um, easy to extend from plugins, which is a bit tricky at the moment. Uh, moving on to settings, um, there's some settings that are related to Puppet as well as other settings that need to be rearranged. Um, some settings show up under the Puppet fact while they actually apply to all, uh, uh, sorry, under the Puppet tab while they actually apply to other config solutions, for example, uh, settings related to fact processing. Um, some of those um, only appear under the Puppet tab, but they actually apply to any other fact source. And there's been some preliminary work started around this, but there's still lots of work to do. Uh, while we do this, we're going to improve the implementation of the settings as well, uh, make them easier to use, and hopefully 
also get rid of a bunch of settings that are not really needed. And the last point that uh, I had outlined in the original um, list is the trends and statistics. Again, this is an area that's not seen a lot of usage, um, but there's still some people who are using it. Um, so, and a lot of it is actually based on information that comes from Puppet currently. So we've decided to take the opportunity of these being pages that are less used, but um, are still useful to some, and extract those to a plugin. And by doing that, also learn of uh, what are the various pitfalls and gotchas that we might hit when we do the Puppet uh, ENC plugin. Um, so there's actually a plugin already. Um, it can be installed with 2.1. It's not yet packaged but uh, for 2.1, but I believe that should be fixed this week. Um, and the idea is that you can install the plugin already with Form 2.1 and have a smooth migration path forward. Once you upgrade to Form 2.2, you will still have your trends and statistics and you wouldn't notice that anything changed other than there's uh, another plugin installed on your system. And on the other hand, if you don't care about these pages, you'll see two less menu items in the big list of menu items that's quite confusing, even to someone who's using Foreman for a long time, such as uh, I have been. Um, so those are the, um, I went quite quickly through all of those 10 different points. I'm sure there's quite a lot of questions in the chat, um, so now, be a great time for taking them. Thank you very much, Tomar. Very appreciated. So, uh, who, does someone has a question to Tomar? No question? Come on. <laughs> I have a question. Um, so, do you already know how many plugins after, well, moving out Puppet to plugins um, will we have at the end? So, currently the plan is just two plugins. One is the Form and Statistics plugin, which is already present. And the second is the Puppet ENC plugin. The rest of the code, either as I mentioned, will be removed or will stay in code. And the same goes also for Smart Proxy and Hammer. Um, everything that we extract from core to plugin, we will also be doing the same for the Smart Proxy and for Hammer. So that if you don't use it, you'll have a simpler experience, and if you use it, only one more package to install. Okay. I guess. Uh the um, Puppet Smart Class parameters will also be um, content of that Foreman Puppet ENC plugin. Correct. So the resources that are going to be moved into the plugin are the Puppet environments, Puppet classes, config groups, and the Smart Class parameters. Smart variables, uh, by the way, have been dropped in Foreman 2.0 a few months ago. If anyone is still using those, that's an example of something that's a workaround for the Puppet 1 or Puppet 2 days. Then probably there's a better way of managing your Puppet classes than with uh, smart variables. Um, and they'll be gone once you upgrade to Foreman 2, so you might want to think about those better ways. Okay, great. Will be the name really Foreman um, Puppet ENC or will it be Foreman um, Puppet? The name is Foreman Puppet ENC. Yes, it's already uh, in the Foreman organization. Mm -hmm. So if anyone's interested to follow the progress along, you're most welcome. There's also already a couple of resources that have been uh, added to the plugin, um, so the but there's work going on right now. Um, 
mostly um, from uh, Andreasa and Chia who are working on this, but also with help from others as well.